One of the most commonly used sensors within home automation has to be the motion sensor, which is usually used to detect human presence in a room in order to turn things on or off. If you use motion sensors to turn lights on and off, then you've probably already come across a problem with them. Most use infrared, and they're not so great at detecting the presence of someone in a room who isn't moving. So you walk into your living room, it detects you walking in, you sit down for a while to watch TV, and the sensor turns your lights off. Well, I have a solution. An ultrasonic sensor that can detect if you're still sitting on your sofa, even if you're not moving. Ultrasonic sensors detect distance and are used in things like car reversing sensors. They only cost a couple of quid each and I've put together an ESP home device that takes distance reading and publishes a present sensor to Home Assistant. I'm building this using a D1 mini microcontroller because they're small and cheap. You can use your preferred board but you'll need to adjust your wiring and configuration accordingly. I quite like the AZ delivery ones from Amazon, but I've also used cheaper ones from China with no issues if you don't mind waiting several weeks for them. You do tend to have to solder your own header connections to them, but if you search around you can get pre-soldered ones for a bit more money. The wiring for this sensor is super simple. There are just four wires as you can see in this diagram. You must connect the sensor to the 5 volt pin on the D1 plus a ground, and then there's a connection for sending a trigger signal and another for receiving the echo response. Once you've wired it all up, connect it to your computer via USB and use the ESP home interface to upload the configuration to it. This time I managed to get the web serial interface to work using the Chrome browser, which has made programming these things a lot easier. As for the YAML configuration for this sensor, it's not quite so straightforward. I started off with my usual template, which enables things like Wi-Fi over the air updating and a useful web interface too. Then comes a section of global variables. The first variable, named maximum distance, determines the maximum distance that the sensor can detect. If you know what you're doing, you can change this value and you'll also need to change the physical sensor value too further down in the configuration. I won't be covering that because there's a lot of maths involved in calculating echo response times. By default, ESP Home uses a maximum detection distance of 2 meters. The reporting interval variable sets how many readings in a row are required before the motion sensor is turned on or off. This is required because the ultrasonic sensors tend to randomly pick up quite a few false distance readings, and by making sure that we have, for example, five close proximity readings in a row before we declare that we have presence or no presence detected, we make this sensor a lot more reliable. Uh, you can change this value if you find that your sensor is performing differently to mine, but the higher this value, the longer it takes for motion um, to be detected. Ignore the other variables, they're just used within the code further on in this configuration file, and move on to the sensor section. Here we have configuration for the physical ultrasonic sensor. You can see that the pin values correspond with the physical pins that we wired the sensor to. The sensor updates every one second and the internal parameter is set to true. This stops the sensor from appearing directly in Home Assistant because it's really the next two sensors that we're interested in. This second sensor is for my special smoothed distance reading. It takes the value from the previous physical sensor and attempts to remove the false readings. Yes, there's a lot of logic to get your head around there, so feel free to just copy and paste it. Finally, there's a binary sensor, created by watching the state of the smooth distance sensor. It works by checking to see if that distance value is within the maximum range of the ultrasonic sensor, and if so, turns it on. If it isn't, turns the sensor off. There's also a delay of 5 seconds applied uh, when the sensor turns off in order to stop it from bouncing on and off too rapidly. You can customise this if you like because again it's just a suggestion that worked for me. Back to the physical sensor that we're building. In order to try it out we need to house the components in a case. As this is just a prototype I found that one of these plastic baked bean pots was ideal to put it in. You just open it up, um, empty out the baked beans Mark an outline of the ultrasonic sensor on the bottom of it and carefully cut out a couple of holes. The sensor should fit nicely inside even with the wires attached and it shouldn't need anything else to hold it in place. 
Cut another hole for the USB power cable to fit through in what will become the bottom of it and then use some blue tack or putty to hold the D1 Mini in place. I then stuck it to the wall in my living room using a bit more putty, pointing across the length of my sofa. It took a bit of experimentation to get it in an optimal position, but as you can see here, once I got that right, it reacted quite quickly and reliably within a few seconds. This is obviously just a prototype that I'm testing and I need to make it look a bit prettier and maybe even get it working from a battery. Hopefully you like this idea and if you did then please give my video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll put all of the code up on my website and the link to that will be in the description. Thank you for watching, goodbye.